Hello and good evening. Thank you for joining us for today's preview of Barnstrecker Bremen to Oldenburg, which I think I said right. For those of you who don't know who I am, uh, I'm Benjamin. I'm a senior community manager here at Dovetail. You probably won't have seen me much because... Just this part of you. Just this part of me, because yeah. I've been mostly working on our other games that aren't trains. But here I am doing my best, and I'm joined by the legend that no one, you know, we don't need to introduce Matt, but Matt <laughs> is also here. Hello. Um, so thank you for joining us, Matt. We very much appreciate you. Um, so we're going to be looking at Barnstrecker Bremen to Oldenburg, which is arriving Tuesday, December the 6th on all platforms, 10 a.m. on console and at some point in the afternoon on Epic and Steam. Um, obviously, JD's not here. He wasn't able to be here today and we were... Uh, hoping that we'd have Lucas with us, but he is unable to join us too. So it's just you and me doing our best. We'll just do us, do us, get on with it. And we'll do uh, our best. Now, exactly. I, know, I know that JD likes to do an admin uh, section of these streams. He so, loves it. It's his favorite bit of the stream. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to touch on admin. And the admin is that there is no admin, uh, except for the fact that there will be a roadmap next week. So that's that's the admin. Right. Should we jump in and do some... Should we just get in to drive some trains? Absolute gaming. Right, let's go with uh, uh, Bremen to Oldenburg. Oh, and remind me, which one are we doing? We are doing the 9.13am Bremen to Oldenburg. 9.13. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in custom weather. Okay. So that it doesn't suddenly go dark, horrible and rainy and you can't see the route because it feels like that would be counterproductive. So let's leave it in custom weather, but we'll put a little cloud on it. Okay. Now I have seen some, some chatter about how we pick our routes for streams, mm -hmm. but there's maybe an idea floating around that we pick them because we only want to show like the best bits. But the reality is actually that we have to show you a certain amount of stuff within a certain window of time. So we try and pick routes that are going to give you, us the best opportunity to show you what it actually looks like. Um, Yes, absolutely. It's uh, we try and show them that everything as much as we can, um, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's uh, it's not everything. Uh, but that also leaves some surprises. So, but it's, so welcome to the cab of the uh, BR one ten. Uh, let's have a quick look around outside. Let's do that once we've got passengers loading, so that we're not wasting time. Let's do setup procedure. We will notice we have many layers going on in the background as well. So I've got I think all the required DLC installed to get all the layers active. So hopefully it'll be uh, fully populated. So to get this thing going, we need to put the reverser handle in, put it in forward. You can hear things kicking up. Uh, we've got the brake key needs to be turned on. And I'm just going to pop that into minimum. And then we're going to get the doors open. All right, let's get outside and look at this thing. Look at that. We'll put the lights on in a minute. Isn't that pretty? I love this. Old so German good. trains. So for those that don't know, what is it that we're looking at here? What is this? So this is the BR110.3 locomotive. And uh, behind it, the much sought, up, sought after Enwagen coaches. So these are single decker coaches uh, with the Karlsruhe cab car on the back. And that's what is, what's the purpose of this back section? So it means that the train can go back in the other direction uh, without having to like put the loco on the other end or have two locos. So this is a coach but it has a bit here. And what it does is it remotely controls the locomotive on the other end. So this is in the UK, for those that know the term DVT, similar to that, not quite the same, but nearly, or DBSO or cab car, control car, all these things are all the same thing. The Dostos had this as well. Um, the Dostos will be found on this route, by the way, for those of you who are thinking, hooray, no Dostos, but they're not included with this route. They're layered in from other things. So uh, this, with this particular service, is off to Hamburg, by the looks of it. We've got ICEs here as well. Where's the ICE going? Can't see. Never mind, doesn't matter. Let's go back to what we're looking yeah, we're, at uh, today. We're running late already, Matt, so about oh. to start. <laughs> that's, how my, that's how I roll, I'm afraid. <laughs> let, let me um, go and have a look at the doors. Because these doors on these coaches, this is like proper old stuff, yeah? So when I shut the doors, you know, they have the coolest animation. Um, let me just That's do that again. 
That's very satisfactory. It, it's got a nice thud to it. It's yeah. very good. Very good. Right, so this switch puts your master lights on. We're on normal lights. Leave the desk light off. We're all good. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break the train. Okay, yeah. Because That's this is something you are all going to do a lot until you get the hang of it. So we, uh, we get going. And uh, we wait for the brakes to come off. You can see your brake gauges over here. And I'm going to start applying power. Now, this, if you've driven the BR155, will be very familiar to you. It's got the, uh, you know, it's one of these trains with a steering wheel. Because, um, yeah, that makes sense, it doesn't it? It confused me to start with, because I yeah. was always under the impression that we were on uh, rails. Exactly. But this isn't a steering wheel. What this is doing is you've got um, 28 notches of power, and it's much easier to select them across the wide range of 360 degrees than the small up and down of a normal throttle handle. So let me put some power on. Let's give it some beans. <laughs> Here we go. We're giving it beans, and what's going to happen is it's dead. It's died. It's died. We're rolling. The engine's cut out. And it's all gone. So uh, re remedy that. You don't have to stop. Cut your power back down to, uh, to zero. Right. And then we press the master main circuit breaker close. Ready for this? Just, that's got everything good. powered up. That's really quite satisfying. Thud. thud. Basically, there's a massive things going on just behind this wall. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's serious. Now we can reapply power. So... What happened? You put too much power. I put too much power on. It basically, if you exceed, I think it's around this 65 kilonewton mark here, which is this bit here, um, then what's going to happen is um, it's going to shut down the power to prevent it from uh, from break, you know, doing any damage. So if I, as I apply power, you see the notches going up, and you hear the power coming along. Now you see we're at 40. Put a bit more power on. Bit more power on. Right, it's up to this. So I'm not going to apply power now for a bit. Apply a bit more power now. And that's how you accelerate. Yeah, You want to balance your, balance your power as you're accelerating. Because if you go over about that 60 mark, you're likely to blow, blow the, uh, um, uh, the motor out. Well, not blow it out, but cut. it gets a cut out, which yeah. you then have to reset. Yeah, and that's just like a built-in safety feature, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I've forgotten the safety systems. Um, I'll put them on at the next station. I, um, I wrote down an interesting bit of information about the BR 110.3, and that it was originally known as the E10. Yep. Yeah, when it was part of uh, Einheit's Elektromotiven, um, the E, I think, is the Elektra. Um, hence, it's because it's uh, one of the uh, uh, the electric locos. So it was an E10, and then the uh, later on uh, changed into being the uh, uh, 110. Uh, no, you can't get in the engine room. I'm afraid. Uh, the thing I liked most about it was that it was uh, nicknamed Crease. Apparently. Really? According to its uh, shape, making it more aerodynamic than the 110.1. This is true. It is, actually. It has the it crease, crease, which the 110 does not have. Sorry, 111 does not have. There you go, see? I'm here to teach as someone who doesn't know what I'm actually talking about. I'm just here to teach. See, this is the other exciting thing. This is our first train with the um, uh, the diamond pantograph on it as well, the old school pantograph. So that's that's fun to see. This uh, gauge over here is telling you what notch um, or what tap everything the engine is running on. Um, so as I tap up, you can see the engine react. Tap down a bit, you can see the engine slowly tapping down. So. Um, that's what you're looking at for before you put the brakes on then you want to tap down wait for that to hit zero and now you can safely put your brakes on it'll do dynamic brakes automatically but if you've got power coming on then the um, uh, then you, you tend to well it, it causes bad bad things basically <laughs> uh, gauge lights yeah quite right actually uh, but remind myself where the gauge light switch is instrument Indicator brightness. Uh, what else? We got? I'm stopping up here. That's why I'm going slow. <laughs> LZB brake release wheel slip. I thought they were on the right hand side next to the one of those three switches next to the power. What I was looking at it earlier, I could be wrong. In the cab car, they're over here. Yeah, up, up one of those. 
Is oh, it instrument lights? Is that not the one? Oh, there's a desk light, which is this one. Oh, there you go. That's, that's doing lots. This is a nice looking bridge. <laughs> You'll be, um, you won't be surprised to hear that people um, are requesting the horn. It's cute, it takes me back. This is proper old school. Not quite as old school as Steam, but this is, uh, this is a long way, way from... This is a very long way from uh, the likes of uh, a Trax Loco or a Taurus or something. Yeah, we're stopping imminently, by the way. We are, but we're only doing 40 kilometers an hour, so. All right, I didn't want to panic you, I didn't want to. No, I, just, I wouldn't be panicked anyway. I've missed stations, you know. All the time. All the time. <laughs> it's my middle name. What station was that? What station is this? Bremen Neustadt. I'm just... glad you said it. This thing has got ridiculous brakes. Yeah, actually, I was, um, when I was playing it earlier, I was trying to work out how to actually brake, because it seems like, from someone who doesn't know how to, you know, doesn't know this loco very well, they seem like there's three possible options of ways to brake if you didn't know. Oh, your instrument lights are already on, by the way, by the default. That's that one. Sorry, carry on. So, yeah, how do you actually brake on this train? Because I was trying to look on the loco even, because I was trying to play it earlier and there was there's quite a few different things I could push and pull and I wasn't sure which one I was supposed to be using. So you got three brake levers. These are the standard three train brakes that most trains have got. This is your driver's brake valve. So this applies the air brakes across the entirety of the train. Mm -hmm. So every axle will apply air, um, air brakes. This is the direct brake. So this will only apply the brakes on the locomotive. Okay. And then this one is the dynamic brake. So this applies electric braking on the locomotive. If you apply the driver's brake it is also physically linked so you can see that that's at four and as i move it you can see it's physically operating so it will it will blend dynamic braking in sure. uh, at the same way but you that's can also independently control this as well sure so that's the driver's brake is the the mainstay go if you've got brake. stuff behind basically the general rule is if you've got stuff behind you you're probably using you want to use the driver's brake if you've got nothing behind you you probably want to use the direct brake and if you want to balance your speed going down a hill you probably want to just use the dynamic brake yeah, fair enough. All right, Jason's made a good point that surely if I'm taking JD's spot, I should be saying uh, the names of all the stations from here on in. So, sorry in advance, everybody. <laughs> need to give it more beans. As we get going, we just need to uh, keep an eye on the uh, on the effort. It kicks quick, doesn't it? Like, it's not doing too much, and it's like, pow. Yeah. Like, what you'll also find is that as it speeds up, or as you notch up, they have a different amount of impact on the power, and some of them actually, you'll find the needle jumps up quite a bit, so you just get used to that. So, now we've got a bit of uh, time between here and our next stop. Maybe you could talk a little bit about um, what the inspiration was behind this route and what challenges did we face in getting like reference images for the vintage train stock for the time period. I guess you could start with why, why Bremen to Oldenburg? Why Bremen to Oldenburg? Well, there was a number of things that sort of inspired wanting to do Bremen to Oldenburg and it was led by, oh, I thought I'd blown that. Um, it was led by um, specifically the desire to do something a little older. And, you know, so we basically set out pretty much with a view to wanting to use a create N-Wagens and uh, probably something like the BR-110. And then uh, Lucas actually went and did a bunch of research on what might be sensible ideas um, that, we could, uh, that we could build. And uh, we settled on the uh, Bremen to Oldenburg line as being uh, an interesting line. It's got some really interesting features. Um, it has, let me just bring up the map for you, just making oh, sure I'm okay for actually, yeah. So this is the map. So here we've got Bremen, uh, where you've got um, sort of, uh, there's a yard here, uh, Bremen here, there's a yard here, there's another yard down here, or sidings there, there's another yard here. So there's, there's quite a lot going on in sort of along the way. So this route actually ends up being, even though it's not especially long, it ends up being uh, quite, quite a lot of variety. 
uh, in terms of uh, everything that can be done on the line. Um, and that was really, really interesting because it means you can condense the game, uh, you know, a wide variety of gameplay without requiring, you know, multi-hour gaming sessions to make it work. Um, this is then the Oldenburg section. Uh, and you can just see how busy that, that timetable is with the, again, there's yard stuff here. Um, <coughs> so there's, 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 there's quite a lot going on um, throughout the journey. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, like I said, I think the main reason we went down this is specifically we wanted to do, we look at something older. We've done a lot of modern trains in Germany and it's like, well, how can we do a route which is different to what we've done before? So was it more of a situation where you wanted to try and get the 110 in? Like, okay, well, that would be really cool to do. Where would we do that? And exactly, yeah. Right, that makes sense. But it looks like there's obviously a lot to do. There's loads of different stuff to explore. Um, and there's a, you know, one of my the things I'm looking forward to seeing later is the bridge. We will be seeing the bridge multiple times today. Multiple times today. I've got the name of the drawbridge here in front of me, right? I'm going to try. Oh, and go for it. This I'm is going to be good. I'm going to try and say it. Um, I believe it's the Essenbahn. Um, <laughs> roll clap route. Eisenbahn roll clap broker. Broker. I think. I, I, was, I think. I would say I get myself. I mean, I'm not very good at saying it's up in German either, so I probably have just made everyone cry just differently when I said it. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give myself maybe a five out of ten at, at, at best pronunciation there. Um, <laughs> so, this is an actual. Is it, is it a drawbridge, right? It's um, yeah, it's a lifting bridge. Lifting bridge which will be lifting in real time every on the every 22 the hour so so it's actually not time based it's one of the really clever things about the bridge is that the um, there are boats that run along and the boat and the bridge is reacting to the boats well well that is interesting it is the, the bridge is reacting to the boats and the boats are doing more than just going around sometimes they actually spin around and park up and moor up to, uh, to be loaded, although you can't see them being loaded, but you can see them coming along and parking up, and at other times you'll see them departing and at... Uh, um, you might want to be breaking it in the not too distant future. Ah, uh, 700 metres away, yeah. <laughs> it's sure. all good. Um, it's all yes, good. actually, sometimes you'll get one boat going through, sometimes you'll get two boats Yeah, you can actually through. get two, and the, the bri both of the two... The the two parts of the bridge that lift lift independently so if there's one boat going through on one side only that bit low goes up if the, and at some times in the day you will see the boats two boats going through and you'll see both sides of the bridge go up and obviously that's very cool what i also like is the fact that you can actually customize the barge or one of the barges that goes under the bridge in livery editor that was kind of it's one of those things that um so just want to highlight the br612 we just passed doesn't come with the back this is one of the layers that's in there and it's effectively subbing in for a train that doesn't exist in the game yet which is a BR648 so it's kind of like not having the BR648 or representing it left a big hole in the timetable so adding the 612 in to sub in for it which is another two card DMU um, meant that sort of it could fill that area of the timetable out so just to flag up um, what that means. Um, yeah, so the um, the barge, because the system is implemented as track, you know, the barge essentially is a train. Um, the um, what have I done? What have you done? Okay, good. Nothing. Nothing. Never happened. Nothing okay. happened. Um, so yeah, because the barge is a train. We realised it could just appear in the rail vehicle editor if we set it up, and and so this was sub brainchild of Lucas and Peter, um, and they uh, they they worked out how to set it all up, and um, it's brilliant. It's really good fun. It's uh, obviously the boat on my train on my game is pink, um, and uh, looks superb. So, so hopefully we might, you know, maybe we'll catch a glimpse of that later. Hopefully. We won't see the pink one, but we'll see the default one that's on here. Sad. I know, disappointing. But you could make a tribute map barge if you wanted to. We could. Um, seeing as you've touched on layers, perhaps we should touch more on layers. Yes. So, um, you can get 
all the all the what you'd need to have all the layers available in this um, pack would include obviously Castle Wurzburg, Dresden. Is it Chemnitz? Yes, Chemnitz. Yeah, Chemnitz. Dresden Risa, uh, the BR101, uh, Dispolok, and Hamburg Lübeck. Yep. Yeah, if you've got those, that then adds in. There are other things that will substitute in, um, but if you've got those items, then, um, then that enables all of the layers. And that's what I've installed on here. And essentially, it adds. 1,478 services, um, 272 of which are playable if you have all the relevant layers. Yeah, them. so the team um, have gone to, you know, added a ton of AI stuff going on and out, particularly, for example, lots of services that would go up and down here on the main line at, at Bremen. So you'll quite often see <coughs> trains running through there. Obviously you can't drive those because they're barely on and then off again. But what they are doing is making Bremen feel nice and busy. While we're on layers, I'll, um, I'll touch briefly on uh, what the differences might be between Gen 8 and Gen 9. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are on a Gen 9 console or Steam, for example, um, you would see, for example, uh, more static stock at Bremen. Um, there'd be more playable and AI ICE services. Um, all the BR, oh, sorry, AI BR 146 and Dosto services would be at Bremen. Um, AI 363 services at Bremen. Um, and there'll be playable 363 museum runs. That's all the museum run looks quite fun. It's a 363 hauling like um, a couple of um, the Enrag and cab cars back to back. Nice. Um, so yeah, there's some services that uh, there's. When I was talking to Joe about the timetable um, before the stream, so I could get a bit more of an insight into what what he'd done. And um, it's aside from the usual run of the mill, there's actually quite a lot of oddball, um, which is uh, really interesting. I'll make it you know, you'll see more strange things going down the line, um, unusual rather than just a straightforward run. So. It's, uh, it should make it more, all the more interesting things to look out for when you're driving. Mm. Um, and we are pulling into Bellumhorst. Sounds good to me. Seems so. now, I think I've got an easy one there, really. Be honest, a lot of the station names on this one aren't, aren't too bad. Oh, I've got, I've got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another look outside. Yes, yes. What we could do, I'm going to let the schedule just run a little bit late while we just have a quick whiz round. Yeah, we're already late. What's we'll a few more minutes? Yeah, exactly. So this is the coaches. Is it my mic that's low volume, or Matt's that's low volume, or maybe I just need to be a bit closer? I'm trying to get as close as I can. Yeah, I think it's probably my fault. I think I was... Yeah, I'm, I can see me peeking into the red over there. I think I was too relaxed. I was leaning back. Uh, chilling out on the job. You, you can even mess with the plates down here if you want to as well. There's just, just silly levels of interactivity. Right, let's get on with it. In train. Nice thing about the door shut really quite quickly as well. No, none of this messing about. Yeah, it's like there's no wind up, it's just close. Just keeping an eye on that TE meter as we start accelerating. Let me just go make it go bad again. Right, oh, yeah. just to remind you all, you are going to suffer from this. Put the throttle back to zero. And then. And then you're good to go. Remember that this is your current notch. That's looking better. Oh, I broke it again. You do it again, yeah. <laughs> that was just, you were just making. Yeah, that was a demo. It was entirely yeah. a demo. Making doubly sure that we got through that. You just like hearing the thunk. I do quite like that thunk, it has to be said. It's really quite satisfying. 
Alright, so you've just said that the station names are friendly. I'm looking at the next one. I'm, I'm already quivering. Got any Germans in the audience who can assist us with the pronunciation of um, Heukenkamp? Because that's probably not how it's pronounced. About two and a half kilometers to that. Yep, one of the comments I've just seen is map breaks things never. It's all part of the stream, all part of the plan. Everything is intentional. That's Jason. Yeah, I expect nothing more or less from Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Hook and Kump. Is that is that how it's pronounced? Hoiken Camp. I, okay, we've got I would not multiple competing pronunciations. Oh, Matt did it perfect. Well, that's a first. All right, um, we're on our way. I saw someone has asked about collectibles, and there are indeed collectibles. Mm -hmm. um, and I've written them down. They include posters at stations, route maps at stations, first aid kits at stations, uh, but the more interesting of those, I would say, for, for me personally, is uh, statues of musicians of Bremen across the route. Oh, nice. Which is pretty cool. Yes, uh, we are going to drive the cab car as well, Cloven Cave. Oh, yes, 100%. Um, and just in case anyone has missed it or has joined late, we are looking at Barnstrecker Bremen to Oldenburg, which is arriving Tuesday, December the 6th on all platforms. It will be $29.99 in pounds, $39.99 in dollars, and $35.99 in euros. It will be available from 10 a.m. on consoles and later on in the afternoon on Epic and Steam. Keep an eye on our socials for the exact stuff when it happens. I almost saw myself slipping into becoming like a, a train announcer when I have to do official stuff. Feels legit. I like it. Right, someone's asked for accelerating from the outside, so let's do that oh, yeah, next. Good idea. Uh, there's no pre-order on this one. Sorry, I spoke over the horn. Yeah, there's no pre-order because it's literally out on Tuesday. And if you're wondering whose voice this is, uh, JD's not dropped an octave in voice. Uh, my, <laughs> my name is Ben. I'm the senior community manager here. Um, and the reason why I was interested in the, the collectible musicians is, you know, just a small side plug here, is I'm also the guy that wrote the music for Trains in World 3 and our subsequent trailers. So, there's, there's that for you to do with what you will. So if you can hear that clicking going on in the background, that's actually part of the way that the, uh, the locomotive works. As you tap up and tap down, it's clicking away and doing that, so you can actually hear that quite clearly. Crazy killer. Um, I will attest that the click clack track is the one that I did not do. Okay. Not that I've got anything, you know, anything wrong with that track. It's just that's just the fact I didn't buy the music for that trailer. Uh, what year is this route set in? 2009. 2009. <coughs> How far through this uh, journey are we on right now? Do I have a look at the map? We've got time. Okay, yeah. Probably going along. <coughs> Deb is asking to turn on the fan. Does that mean anything to you? Do that in a second. Cool. And a request to hear the horn from the inside again. It's a lot quieter than the inside, I'm guessing the horn is somewhere slightly by the back. Say that again. The horn on the inside as well. Well, I'm just saying it sounds relatively quiet by comparison inside. Yes, it is quite quiet inside. 
Well, I rather panicked. I don't often drive from the outside like this, so... I'm actually, believe it or not, even less good than normal. I think I'm distracting you as well. I keep talking and asking you stuff. And... There's a first aid kit down there. Nice. Safety first. The pantograph spark, right? Uh, we'll have a look at the pantograph next. I'm just racking up things for you to do. Well, that only, actually, you need to be in the rain for that, so I don't know whether or not we'd see that at the moment. But we'll have a look. But essentially, yes, they do, but it depends on... The frequency of them depends on... Whether yeah, it's the same as on... Um, yeah, the, the reason they didn't on the 323 is because the pantograph is on a car that doesn't have power. Yeah, the motors, the draw for the power is in the end cars, whereas the power... So that that was that's what's just getting fixed. I think there's a fix been submitted for that. I'm just waiting for it to test it. Uh, right, let's get these doors closed. Right. Uh, traction power. Right. Get going. Where are we going next then, uh, Ben? Um, we're going to Book Holzberg. Good to me. Confidently. <clears throat> uh, someone asked if the windows are interactive, so uh, yeah, I hope I've demonstrated that the windows are interactive. The windows are not interactive <coughs> on the coach themselves, though. BR425, interesting story on the BTO 45 Hopefully it's stopping. It's not, not stopping. <laughs> Fine, we'll show it later. Fine. Uh, but the BR45 uh, has had physics updates, um, quite significant physics updates. So it behaves more like a BR423 now, um, which is how it's supposed to behave. Um, and it. Uh, hang on. Um, it's also uh, the field BR45s that run the Bremen Oldenburg line um, are, num are named. Uh, there are six of them, if I remember rightly, and they're uniquely named. So those have been added as well. So the 645s can all be found and are all named correctly. Another question from our forums here. Um, what influenced the uh, your layer choices? And how did you determine which rolling stock could be layered on Gen 8 consoles? So, I mean, uh, in terms of generally when we're looking at doing layers, it, it literally is as... Uh, oh, hello. I broke it. Uh, it literally is as... Uh, I don't know what I did to break it, but I did. The brakes have come on. Uh, so layer choice is literally about um, we look at everything that we've got in the kit bag to be honest all of the trains that exist um, and um, you know we'll find out what um, uh, what's um, what is appropriate uh, so one of the key ones this was decision about do we do the BR six this the 648 line what do we do about that and that was when the decision was made you know with Lucas to uh, change that to being the 612 so it still represented those services um right, I've I've broken this. It's uh I have to fix it now. Well and truly unhappy with me. Turn it off and turn it on again and everything will be fine. Probably. Yeah, all the brakes have come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh and here we go. 
Oh, I was messing with the brake. I was messing with the brake, with the loco brake, and I think I managed to accidentally because it's a manually lapped one. I think I had in a, in, a, in a, it's been slow, slowly applying for a while now. So ah. there we go. Problem solved. Incompetence of the driver, which is normally what it boils down to on this stream. Yeah, you'd have some very concerned passengers in real life if this was happening. <clears throat> to be honest, most of them would see me getting in the cab and get off the train. So <laughs> with the pink headphones on for no reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, we looked at, um, you know, what can be done. So you put the basic traffic patterns down. Oh, there's a 101 with the IC coaches going by. You put the basic traffic patterns down, and then you start looking at things like uh, IC1s and BR101s for our intercity traffic. And then once you've got those kinds of patterns down, you then look at, you know, well, what can we do with shunters? Because obviously those don't get scheduled and timetables and things. And then that's where other, other moves um, get added. So there's, there's all sorts of other craziness that goes on... Um, in this timetable. I'm not going to spoil it all, but uh, things like empty coaching stock moves, um, some really strange um, freight moves. Even the 101 gets a freight move, which is rare, but they do happen. Um, so uh, there is uh, there's all manner of variety. And then it's just uh, a question of, um, you know, working out what's appropriate and appropriate and trying to put as much on as possible. Mm. Seeing a few people asking, um whether you whether the loco from this will layer into previous it substitutes into other low trains but it doesn't there's no layers for it so while the br110 can be used on other routes by a substitution um the coaches don't substitute so this will be the only place you can use the n wagons book holtzberg is book coming up here we go Oh, did I miss a... Ah. Oh, no, no, no. I missed a signal. <laughs> oh, so just demoing PZB working for everybody. Yes, all part of the plan. Wait for the brake pipe to charge up now. Is this part of the having a busy AI route that you're more likely to... Yeah, there's going to be more likely to see um, see other aspects uh, and uh, signal aspects on there and uh, there's just generally quite a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I'm running 10 minutes late now. Ten, 10 minutes late. We've run a red light. Well, we haven't run the red light. The oh, red okay. light's still in front of us. That's the good thing about the German safety system. Oh, right. It's actually very ball. difficult to run the red light because shortly before the red light, it says, are you watching? Are you paying attention? Because if not, we're about to stop. Yeah. No, you're not paying attention. Right. So 600 metres to our stop at Buchholzberg. It's a great demo. Well, I think we're doing a good demo, but if I was a passenger, I'd be annoyed. Possibly. <laughs> or you'd want to pay extra because of the extremeness of the ride. It's like, you know, it belongs in a theme park. Yeah, I think Red Leader's made a very good point. This is a perfect example of why, you know, a real driver can't just have his mate next to him having a full-on conversation. Yeah. Because it would be a disaster. Exactly. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a real working demonstration of... Um, you know, why you should never use your phone in your car, for example. Exactly. And uh, it's st oh, so easy to be distracted. I mean, I'd like to say that, um, you know, when I've been playing this on my own, this has never happened. And I'd be right, but then I think no one will probably believe me, so... Right, coming into Buchholzberg. I like these routes that are a bit off the beaten path because it's um, it, everything seems a bit more rural. Yeah, no, I, I really like... I enjoy countryside. Personally, when I'm doing these, I really like... Um, countryside or near water, lakes and oceans and stuff like that. I like those kind of routes. Mm. This is something I've not seen before, and granted I've not played an awful lot, but where it says, um, 
stable 028 and it's got the 500 hertz. That's not a... So this is a new, uh, a new thing that uh, was added in part of TSW3, which is the Pisa B helper. Um, which, you know, if I was paying attention to it, would probably be guiding me around not making these mistakes. So if you're new to things like PZB, then you don't have to worry. P uh, if you're interested in learning PZB, the helper will actually um, guide you through what you need to uh, to understand it. Mm. So we're here at Buchholzberg down here, and we've just got this bit to get down to Oldenburg. It's, a cool, it, it's, it's interesting, actually, because Bremen and seemingly Oldenburg are obviously quite busy... <laughs> densely populated places with lots of different um, you know routes going here there and everywhere uh, but you, the majority of the route is countryside and very rural and scenic and lots of the stations are very quaint mm. and, and cute but it's obviously a very busy line so there's lots going on all the time yeah and it's quite a bit of a quite a nice mix of things as well again that was one of the things that appealed when we were looking at it is that um, it's not like it's just a branch line with some passenger trains running up and down it um, it's a um, <clears throat> you know, it's got more going on than just that. It's uh, there's some really nice freight plays a major role on this route as well. It's not a bit partner. Mm. Good news for the freight fans. Oh yeah, we've got five kilometres before we stop in Hude. I'm going to assume that I've, there's no other way that I could possibly say that, right? Well, I think they. I, I think it's Huda. But I, I don't know. Um, I'll wait for someone to uh, to correct me. I think you're trying to trick me. Is it um, Hude or Huda? So, let me ask you some more questions from our forums. How did you get the reference material for the new rolling stock? Were you able to visit in person? Or could you perhaps um, rely only on existing research? So, um, a combinations of um, some of the existing re uh, research, but actually we got a lot of help from some of our beta testers who actually have access to this stuff um, on, a, uh, on a regular basis. Um, so, uh, yeah, they were able to go and get us actually uh, really detailed um, photographs, particularly the coaches and the cab car. Quite often you find that um, locomotives, you can get photographs off online and so forth it's we obviously we got a lot better photographs this way but coaches and cab cars people don't take pictures of because who cares about coaches well we care about coaches you care about coaches so and this is one of the things that makes it challenging so having um having the support of the the beta testers to whom i want to give a huge shout out and a massive thank you you know who you are um is uh, is one of the things that's made it possible to do this so that does lead us on to the next question, which I guess you kind of answered, but what was the biggest challenge over the course of sort of creating this route for you? I think it is really about getting the... Um, the, the I mean, the route, I think, was um, not too dissimilar to many other routes. Uh, signalling is no, no different. It hasn't changed. We haven't gone back far enough for signalling to particularly change. You've got to go a lot further back um, for that to happen. But modelling this uh, old locomotive, getting the right version, because the BR110 has had multiple guises. There's an older version of the cab even, which is quite distinctively different. Um, and uh, making sure that everyone is looking at the same pictures of the same locomotive and uh, sub-variant and so forth is, uh, is kind of where, the, um, where some of the challenge lies. We touched on this a little bit earlier on the stream, actually, Matt. Um, but one of the questions we got on the forum was, why did we choose to focus on the playable areas that we did? And you've already mentioned um, sidings and uh, uh, the variety that offers on the route. Maybe we can expand a bit more on that. Yeah, so when we're looking at any kind of a route project to make, we're just as um, able to fall down the black hole of, be nice if, ooh, we could do that, that looks really nice. And so all these things do get looked at. Um, but actually what we need to keep reminding ourselves is what's the purpose and focus of the route um, and the constraints is within it's got to work in because you don't have an unlimited time to make a route. It's, it's, um, it's, it's got to be built to a, uh, a spec. And, um, so, and that was where when we were looking around at uh, looking at what the options were, it's was, it was like, well, what can we add in in terms of the yards and sidings? Um, and we opted not to bring in branch lines in because actually you... 
uh, sometimes you start needing bespoke stock to use it properly, or um, it adds, you know, more, quite a substantial amount of extra trackage or stations. Stations is one of the more difficult, time-consuming things to model. Um, so it's really, you know, it's all about with every route we take. It's about um, really trying to keep focus on what actually we'll be trying to do here and in this case it was giving the BR110 the end wagons a really fun place um, for players to uh, to run them up and down the line mm. with pl plenty of other things to do as well you know this is uh, branch lines more branch lines would always be better but um, the route stands up stands strong without them yeah and that's what I think makes it so interesting is all all the options for variety and things that you can experiment with doing and, and play around with doing I think it's, you know, when you, when you look at it just from a, oh, well, it's 10 stations, it's 27 miles, that's, it's so much more than the length of the actual route itself when you take into account everything that you can actually do with that content. Um, and obviously, if we look at some of what we deem as being features of the route, obviously, first of all, it's obviously entirely new, um, never been covered at any previous release, um, and it also represents an an era in which allows for some of this iconic, um, you know, German stock that we've never been able yeah, to Yeah, absolutely. Before. Yeah, and it's, um, yeah, it's something that a lot of players have asked for is the older stock. And uh, it's something I've been, you know, really keen on myself. It's like, you can only, you know, find Dostos appealing for so long. Um, and then it, it really does need something else. And these will appear in a lot of route going forward as well, because again, they're, they're ubiquitous. They appear in a lot of cases, a lot of places. So um, the, uh, it's, uh, it's good to have some variety. There are other variations of the cab car. This is the Karlsruhe version of the cab car. There's another version with, with slightly different shape and windows on the end there. So there, you know, there, there's still room for expansion as well in the future, uh, potentially. But um, I think this is, uh, this is, it's, it's finally good to see um, these uh, coaches in there. A couple of people I've noticed are talking about issue, an issue on the PZB. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I've noticed it and I'm aware of it I'm, and I will take it back to the team. It will not be fixed before release because there's no time for that. It's out on Tuesday. But I, uh, I hear you. You've heard, you've seen, you've noted. It will be fixed. It's... So some other stuff that's also featured in this uh, route is the DBBR425, mm -hmm. um, which is in a newer condition than the Haustrecker Reiner. That's the one. Um, could you expand on how it's in a newer condition and what's different about the 425? So the 425 on uh, how HRR, if I remember rightly, was sort of weathered um, and worn and... Uh, Whereas uh, this one is, uh, the new one is kind of a more of a, the shiny red, um, um, a more fresh uh, version of it. Um, it's had all new physics, um, which much, it make it perform much, much more correctly, much more like a BR423. Um, although there are issues um, or some differences even between the 425 and the 423, where the 425 has more modern components on it and there's actually some delays. So when you first apply power, there is a delay, I think, of a couple of seconds before it then reacts to that. So that's been added into the 425 as well. Um, so, and putting it back into minimum power will actually put zero power onto the tractive motors like they're supposed to as well, as previously it would put power on there. So it's, um, there's a number of uh, physics changes across the board as well as some art changes uh, on, to give, make it look a diff slightly different to the other one. And then, as I said, you've got the name and the shield that are on the side of them as well. When we get to, I'm hoping there'll be a 425, either at uh, Wisting or, or at um, um, Oldenburg, the other end of the route, which is the next two stations. Um, and uh, I'll be able to show you the 425. If not, then I'm sure some point today we'll see a 425. Yeah, we should try and make sure that we're able to at least have a glimpse of it, right? Um, the other thing is the Press BR155 for free. Yes, yeah, so again, having a route with some older stuff in it, um, it was uh, 155 has been one of my favorite trains, even from back in TS Classic days. And so we were looking around at, uh, you know, how appropriate the 155 would be for this and it's a good fit um, but we didn't want to just bring it back in 
read. Um, we've got a good relationship with the President Sorban, and um, it seemed like a really good opportunity to bring the BR155 back in the uh, a different colour, put it in the blue press livery, um, and uh, also give it a bit of love on the physics front and the setup front as well. So um, it's had some improvement, things like LZB, and uh, which is also on the 45 as well, uh, and PZB. Um, and there's also some fairly significant changes physics-wise. So it now does this thing called bridging, brake bridging. Um, and what that means is that um, you can, um, if you want to apply the brakes, you know when I said on this one, when you apply the brake, it will apply the electric brakes, so you need to make sure it's powered down. Well, with brake bridging on the 155, if you flick the switch for brake bridging, you can then just go ahead and apply the brakes, and it will only apply air brakes. It won't apply the, it locks out the dynamic brakes temporarily. Um, so that's implemented. Um, and there were some other things that were explained to me as well that have gone in one ear and out the other as well. So there's some, there's some decent changes to braking and some tweaks to the power side of it, but probably more changes to braking on the 155. Interesting. And uh, we have new grain wagons for free as well, as I understand it. The Tadgers wagons. Yes. Large grain wagons. Sounds good to me. Yes, it's good to finally get those out. They were actually made quite a long time ago for Ross Ignored, but they weren't, they didn't fit. Um, so um, yeah, it's good to get those out. They've got quite a distinctive look to them. If we see one, I'll point it out. Um, but uh, you'll you'll see them in uh, in some of the content we've got to have a look at tonight. Nice. Did you mention that the DB BR45 has LZB functionality added to it? I did. Yeah. Did good. That was a bullet point. The bullet point. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been achieved. So, right, we're coming into Woosting? I guess so. That's the next one. And then we're at, uh, we're almost there now for Oldenburg, it's just up there. Fantastic. And then we've got the Fables 10 in 10. Which we're very grateful to our creative team. They've been working hard on that today. They really, they really have. Not just today, but the last couple of three days. I, I loaded this video into our streaming software with two minutes to spare. So it'll be <coughs> the first time I've seen it. So I'm, ex <laughs> I'm excited to see what we've got. Oh, braking modes on the 155. That's the other thing that's been added, Red Rev. Sorry, yes. Thank I knew you. that was... I seem to remind myself, must say that. I know everyone wants to know about that. So thank you for asking that and reminding me. What great community, huh? Yeah, they're amazing. I'm glad someone knows these things. Yeah. Uh, the 425 won't sub into older routes. Um, at least not at the moment. It's just something that's being looked into, but certainly at the moment it isn't. Um, but you'll obviously you can use it on them in Scenario Planner and so forth. To let you concentrate while we slow down before I <laughs> find, find, find my next question at you. The level crossings have got this bell on them as well. I'll see whether or not it's doing them for uh, uh, when we still cool. doing it. It's People just... are asking to see the level crossing it's earlier. That beep as you slow down is the train reminding you to open the doors. Friendly bit the the BR 101 out. goes to Frey Garben at that point as well so it's it's a fairly standard feature but this one just beeps and you're supposed to know what the beep means let's have a look at the doors have a look at the camera you but there's some really neat animation on these i'll see if i can catch it as we drive off that sounds rural countrysidey does proper old school <clears throat> Moggy is saying that the beep is actually um, a warning that you're driving getting it would be going constantly then surely that's other people call that PZB <laughs> oh they're getting impatient now the drivers oh no that's because I put the camera here the train reacts the cars react to your camera Oh, they think that you're stood there. But they think I'm stood there. Get out the road with your camera. Drive off. Hopefully there's not another train coming that will hold the gates down.
Eight kilometers to Oldenburg. Nice. Don't break the train. We're not on the train to fix it. Ooh, close. Yeah, we'll be sure to show the scenarios before. When we go back to the menus next, we can have a look at that, can't we? Yes. Yes, definitely. Oh, these gates are insisting they sit down. Is there, was there another one coming this way? There they oh, go. Oh, well. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? Typical. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, huh? Um, so, Matt, we touched on these earlier, but can you tell us more about the museum runs that I mentioned in our article? Um, so I don't know a lot about them. All I know, and you will see a clip uh, in the video of a 363 with a couple of N-Wagon cab cars behind it. You now know as much as I do. Um, just looking at that image makes me think, I want to do that. But Matt, can I ask you a preliminary question before we jump into this? Mm. Um, can you tell me what a museum run is? It's basically, there is a museum in the area. Right. It's not on the route, but it's near the route. And so essentially a museum run is taking train vehicles to or from the museum. Right, I thought that was some kind of... Uh, it's, not code, it's not code, it's quite it's literal. It's terminology for something It's else. quite literal. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally going to a museum. Okay, fine. Right, six kilometres and you will get your first look at the Clapper Bridge in a minute. Yes. We might have even seen it um, coming up. We, we, you never know, we might do. You never know. Uh, what time is it? Nope, you won't see it now. It's 10.07. Generally, the boats are scheduled to go through around sort of 10.40ish. Sorry, 40 minutes past the hour-ish. There's some other ones as well, but generally speaking, around 10.40ish. Oh, Pentis, there is a, a lifting bridge on this route where barges will uh, sail underneath they might turn around I think some of them dock um, sometimes you might get one barge coming through so one side of the bridge will lift sometimes there will be two we will be showing it lifting we will so. show it lifting yes and I suppose you're going to want me to tell you what the name of the drawbridge is which is the Essenbahn um, Essenbahn Rolf Clap route don't think that's right. It's close enough. Yeah. They know what you mean. Um, I'm guessing barges have priority, do they, over trains? Uh, it depends, obviously, because it's all hooked into the dispatcher system. So if your path is booked out across the bridge, then you'll keep it and the boat will wait. Um, but um, so it's just two, effectively two competing train systems. Um, and it's down to uh, yeah, who gets there first a bit like one of those if you're really close to a light that's turning red it's actually safer just to keep going than to slam on your brakes <laughs> if the light's red you must slam on no, your no, brakes like if it's you know if it's just <laughs> gone amber and you're really close to the light you know what i mean would you um would you be comfortable doing a German route in the future that is further into the past? Definitely, definitely. We are part of this is to see um, see what people think of the older stock. It's to get us used to making some of the older stock and some of the challenges with getting reference for it, mm. um, and um, you know challenges along those lines. So uh, no, no, it's uh, we've done lots and lots of modern trains. So it's kind of like. There's only so far you can go, um, so it's time to look at some of the other trains that are that go back in time a bit and explore some really, really interesting older German stock. It's a funny thing because I feel sort of an equal amount of love for hyper modern, but also a lot of um, nostalgia for. Sort of the histor more historic and vintage stuff. So I, I wouldn't say that. I don't think I have a preference. Oh, here it is. This is the bridge, and it's down at the moment. Um, obviously, we're about to go over it. Um, but you can see the... Uh, it's quite a fearsome structure. It's really cool. 
mean, you'll see a closer look at it in the 10 and 10 in a minute, but the way it rolls back and there's almost like a track that it rolls back into, it's very cool. <coughs> yeah, no, Lucas, Lucas spent a lot of time animating the bridge because there's more even going on than that. What you can see is the, you can see where the overhead line equipment actually comes across here. Um, and all of these, this has to get out of the way so that this can roll into it. So all of this stuff spins across. And it's because it's, it's the thing when you think about this, this is overhead wires. How do you manage overhead wires with a lifting bridge? I, I wouldn't it's, know the answer to that. So it's, I'm, uh, I'm not an engineer. It's, uh, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot happening there. And so you can see all the animation going on to actually make it happen. So it's very, very good. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite cool that we're, you know, we've been driving in, um, you know, nice lovely countryside and this is all suddenly becoming very uh, city-esque 363 down there from oh, the Dresden route lovely We've got a uh, Dispolock 182 popped in over here the press 155 a couple of 612s stabled away oh hello I forgot Sifa uh, let's have a quick look at the press there you go this is the uh, the blue 155. I mean, it's basically just a blue 155 along really with cool. the internal changes, but I, like I, I actually prefer the blue, gotta say. Very shiny. Blew it 300 meters from the station. <laughs> Someone said we're 14 minutes late and that's uh, not helping us at all. No. We may be 14 minutes late, but in terms of our schedule map, we are running almost on time. Really? Yeah. Wow, that kind of, we've got time to waste. Yeah. <laughs> this JD, he knows I'm, I waffle too much and he pads the schedule out accordingly now. Well, I think it's a, a combination of the two of you because, you know, JD, he can speak. And he likes his 25 minute admin preamble. He does. That's, that's why our stream is overrun, I think. <laughs> Admin. <laughs> Admin is the cause of most problems in the world. <laughs> All right, let's bring it into Oldenburg then. I don't know what what ghostly spectre is typing that message me, to me, telling me to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on. BR one hundred and one sitting over there with the uh, IC coaches. An Oldenburg station. Old being the operative word, I think. By the way, if you thought I was bad driving this, wait until you see me driving the cab car. It's uh, oh boy, next level comical. Crazy. I, I, how do you know I've got quite a good track record for um, not leaking things uh, on stream? So touch wood, we'll be all right. But never say never. Oh, we have arrived. Oldenburg. It's a cool looking station. Yeah, it is. Lovely. Still no 425s to see though. Where have they all gone? Oh, I don't think they come up this far. They go off to Nordenham. I was going to ask you actually, do you know, like from Oldenburg, where else you would be able to go if the world was entirely open? No. Me neither. Up there. Up there, and then along there. And down there? Yeah. But, yeah. No, I must admit, I've not looked in detail at the rest of it. Lucas did a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the research on this route, uh, of Fair course. Enough. So, should we have a look at some of the. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Timetables and scenarios. So here are your scenarios. Delivered in 60 seconds. Chop and change. Stormbringer. Beats by Bremen. Stuck in the middle with Hood. And uh, sharing is caring. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a wide range here. You've got uh, two for the 155, two for the 425, and two for the 110. Well, one for the 110 and one for the cab car. So there's uh, a variety of things to do across all of the included trains that are in there. Lovely. Well, and then that, timetable. 
Yes. You've got. So this is this is I've got I've not got the entire German collection on. I've got some of it. Um so you'll see. So for example, if you had the G6, then the G6 would appear on here because it subs in for the 363. 204 does as well. Um so you've got the IC1, 612, cab car, the numer- any most of your variations of 185 will 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 sub in. Similarly, you know, if you've got the disc lock or uh then you've got multiple types of um Taurus, they'll sub in. You can choose this. I haven't got Raws ignored, um, so you won't. And, and the red one, so you won't see that appear in here. But the red one five five can be used on here, and you can also use the blue one anywhere the red one goes currently as well. But you, if you want to activate a one five five layer like on Raws ignored, then you'd still need the red one to activate the layer. Um, uh, holy moly, lots of trains in one route, night route. Just to be really clear, you get the 110, the 425, and the 155 in this route, and the cap car. Everything else here is from the rest of the collection yeah. I've got installed, just showing you what other kinds of layers and things you get in here. So let me just look at the 110. This is sort of some of the spread of services that are in here. So we've got some of the... Uh, Joe was explaining to me that there are four trains that do the um, BR110 services with the Envagons. One of those trains doesn't have a cab car and has therefore you've got to do runarounds. Um, the other three trains have cab cars, so you'll be running in, you'll be running with the cab car in one of the directions. So nice bit of variety there actually, uh, in terms of what you'll be doing. But good selection of services there. Uh, 425 is uh, Norden and Bremen services um, predominantly. So you're driving about half of the route uh, on the uh, eastern half of the route. Uh, again, so it's about a 20-minute drive in the 425. And then the Presnitztorbahn BR155 has just a variety of freight. And then that'll be what's providing the uh, the, the core of the freight for um, uh, for all the freight, other freight trains to sub into. So if you use the, uh, this Boats one. to do, Matt. Tons, tons and tons. So for a little route, you can see there's actually... You know, there's quite a lot of stuff going on there. Um, the 363, um, again, even the 363 has got some bits and pieces to do, including the museum runs and cool. other stuff. Yeah. Right, Matt. Um, the next thing we're going to do um, will be a look from the cab car perspective. Um, so you can get ready for that. Um, but actually, what we're going to do first is the Remind 10 me which one is? 9, in 13. 10. No. It's the 10.33 a.m. Yep, that one. That's the one. Right. So, 10 and 10 time. We've got to look over there to see it. That's all good. Let's jump into it. All right, so we're kicking off with a time lapse of Bremen at 300 times speed. So you can get uh, an idea of what's going on there throughout the course of a... Yeah, yeah there's a, a number of different captures here, and it just gives you an idea that uh, there's a lot going on. So you see some big, long freights here. These are being examples of AI-only freights that are just rattling through, uh, making the line, making the station um, busy. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can, see, you can also see the new snow effects that came in with TSW3 have been applied here as well, just in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, this this uh, Bremen is a is a hive of activity. Oldenburg is pretty busy as well. Just heard but, a tannoy announcement at three hundred times. Quite funny. <laughs> there you go. There's the IC one coming in. The nice. uh, the bridge. There it goes. That's a beautiful shot. So the bridge is pushed up by um, two big giant um, pneumatic pistons, um, and then it uh, it rolls back along the uh, the uh, the gear the cog there. I was wondering how it worked actually. If, if for some reason in my mind, I thought the big structure on the back of them was some sort of counterweight system going on. You can see the two big pistons there holding it up. Yeah, yeah. There it goes. The bridge going the the, the boat the barge going through. And that's one of the barges you can customize in livery editor. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun doing that and then seeing it sail past while waiting for it to go past on your train. Generally, if you're driving a train, you probably won't ever see the bridge anywhere near up. You won't get, you're unlikely to be held up in front of the bridge waiting for it. So some special services. This is just some screenshots, uh, some clips of some of the, uh, the oddball services. So this is the BR101 on a freight train, which happens, but not that often.
good question about why the uh, catenary doesn't break. You kind of answered that earlier. But I'll show you when we actually have the thing itself. I will try and show you what happens. It's there is a there's a bunch of machinery about me or stuff about the way it works. This is the ICU one um, running on its own. Because hey, that's fun. This is the one of the ECS trains, which is just this oddball mix of weirdness. It's really cool. Eclectic. Now this is the museum train. All right, now we're looking at the Enwagen interior. <coughs> which we're going to jump into in a moment too, so you can see it properly mm. in action. We did mention um, what the differences will be on Gen 8 consoles slightly earlier in the stream, but it's also um, spoken about in the announced article, which is on our website, transimworld.com. Yep. Just to be clear, Gen 8 does have AI services. It's it just it will have fewer AI services. Yeah, and not, not by a huge amount. No, it doesn't. It's more about getting it's eliminating some of the uh, the variety of the... Uh, because that's what consumes the memory. Volume of services doesn't really consume a lot of memory, but uh, lots of different types of trains and things do. There's the cab for the N-Wagon. For those of you who are fans of the uh, UK AC Electrics... Loud. Um... You'll, you'll find this actually quite a fun train to drive because it drives like a class 86. I'm guessing the audio experience in the M wagon is entirely different to being in the... Because there's no, there's no motors, there's no yeah. fans. You're remote controlling the train at the other end, so if anything, it feels a little bit quiet. Yeah, how strange. Why is it called the N wagon? Do you know? That I don't know. Because there's N wagons, Y wagons, X wagons. There's a different uh, ranges of them. Mm. Alright, so this is the interior of the BR110.3, which is what we were just in. This time it's snowing. <laughs> N stands for Navaka. There you go. Navaka's wagon. Uh, yeah, PZB is in the route. Uh, Kabebe. Love that shot. <laughs> there will be sparks, then here, yes. Mandatory whistle. Mandatory whistle. It's a good sounding whistle. Yeah, um, air whistles like that are uh, a little bit more um, friendly to on the ears, particularly in um, in depots and the like. Yes, definitely. So we're gonna have a little look at some route tasks and collectibles. So we're this, looking at that's the map. Uh, the map. This yeah, is maps. the first aid. 
any new freight rolling stock? We mentioned this earlier. It's the grain. The Tadger's grain wagons, yeah. Yes. Tourist posters. Lovely. Oh, these must be the statues. The statues. Well, obviously, it's our own flavour on the statues. They're donkeys. <laughs> but if you look up, it's a uh, it's it's a, it's a fairly well known what it's based off. We've got some layers. Sound disappeared off this bit. It did. Don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> this will be because we didn't get a chance to watch it before we Possibly. put it in. So you 612, let's enjoy the visuals. Yeah. You've heard these trains before. I, so it's a 612, this is the uh, ICE-1. Obviously you need the relevant um, pieces of content to make these work. They don't come in the actual pack, just to make that clear. ICE-1, uh, sorry, the IC services on the BR-101. This is the disc block BR182. How many ice services are there? Don't know. There's a custom liveried barge. Oh. That's cute. I think Vic had fun making <laughs> that. That's actually one of the barges parked up. And that's how they come as standard, right? This is what they look like by normal, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see people making their own ones of these and sharing them. Oh, and there it is in livery designer. I know this is what you're all going to be doing secretly. I'm looking forward because this will all be compatible with Creators Club as well. So, I'm looking forward to seeing some some good designs for the barge. Yeah, well, there's a big canvas to play with. All right, and that's ten in ten. Awesome! Big shout out, thank you to the creative team for the uh, for that video. Yeah, they've done a great job there. Especially like, some of those shots were trailer worthy. Yes, very good. So, now we are jumping into the 10.33 a.m. cab car. Where are we and where are we going? So, first put your reverser in, put it forward, just doing our normal setup. We are in Oldenburg, Oldenburg. I think, this time. Yes, yep. we're in Oldenburg this time, and we'll be heading to Bremen. So, again, release the brake key. I'm going to pop the brake on just a little bit, and we'll get the doors open. Right, so you can see the cab is very different to what we've had before, and you'll find you're actually going to be driving this with less information, because one thing that the cab does not tell you is what tap you're in. The, the HUD will tell you, uh, but that's cheating. Um, the HUD does not. The HUD gives you some information about what's going on with these uh, gauges, um, and uh, some of it is just going to be down to feeling your way as you go. It's, uh, it's a fun train. Can you show the uh, doors slamming from the... Uh, outside please before we depart yep so signal lights are normal let's get the instrument lights on and that instrument lights one on as well traction motor fan on the back we won't be hearing that will we we won't but uh, someone else will and it'll annoy them and i'm happy about that train lights on how do you open the doors in the cab uh, so what happens is you use the uh, the door switch and it it works out which door to open. In reality, a guard does it. Um, but uh, what happens is you can if when I press Y and you will just operate this switch and there's a bit of intelligent scripting there which will work out which doors to open. Yeah, when I was um, having a go at earlier, I could see that there's a, the switch for the left doors is actually on the left, so you have to like either reach over or get up and walk over and do it, which probably isn't what you'd actually be doing. Put the front lights on. Right, I think we might actually be good to go. Uh, questions about the uh, 
Um, the thing you set that up by moving this. Oh, that's very cool. All right, see those doors slamming. All right, outside. Get next to some uh, those doors. Those are the cargo doors. That's why they're not opening. Right, so breaks off. Right, this train works with it's got a throttle off control at the top, run down, hold, and run up. And what run up does is it's run up, it's like as you hold it and run up, it's like you're turning the wheel. Run down is turning it in the other direction. Yeah, so if as I if you watch these gauges here, so I just put it in run up, you can see things start to react. Now this is the remote locomotive telling me what it's doing. Um, and you can see we're now starting to move. Now you're not going to hear anything because it's at the other end of the train. That's like incredible engineering, really. Yeah, when you consider the age of this stuff, it's um, it's it's just done by effectively these controls are just three, I think, three pins on the cables that go backwards and forwards, and it's just literally telling it to go up or down. Yeah. Whereas in the cab itself, you've got the wheel. Obviously, you can set it to exactly what you want from the get go. Very cool. Can we be a passenger riding the trains? Yes, as with all of our uh, uh, our content, you can be a passenger. Can you horn from the outside, please, Matt? Oh, sounds different. So we won't do the entirety of um, of this route. We just wanted to make sure that we gave, gave you a good glimpse of the M wagon because um, we do want to show you a couple of other little things before we call it a day on this little show. Um, we want to, but we'll have a, a little look around here and we'll use this opportunity to ask a couple more questions. This looks like it might be a, um, going to Hude. So we must be, we're we skipping a station. Worsting. We're skipping Worsting. Yeah. This is an express run, if I remember rightly. Yeah, that makes sense. So now I'm running down and you can see all the needles coming down because you can see we've approached the speed limit so I've just put it in run down and the power will then run off and it'll latch in run down whereas um, it won't latch in run up as soon as I release it it comes back but you put it in run down it'll it'll leave it there oh, just a minute over the bridge but you can hold it in there so when you're going to get power back on again you can press and hold it in run up and leave it there while you're waiting for the power to get back where you want to once you get the hang of it, you'll, I think you'll quite enjoy it because it's, it's a different train to drive or a different driving mechanic than a lot, uh, just about any other train out there. And like I said, if you're familiar with the um, UK trains like the Class 86, uh, 87, it is that style of control system with the tapping controller. I'm going to hit you with another forum question, Matt. Fire away. Um, Shelby from the forums has asked, will there be situations when driving freight trains where you are sent on the overtaking track and have to wait until a faster train has passed us. So I asked Joe this question and the answer was yes, with an exclamation mark. Um, and he said that where services, where the wait is an extended wait, it's been split in two. So if you want to just exit and go back into the wait after, so you don't have to wait all the time, then you can do that as well. Or if you want to wait, you can do that too. The choice is yours. Another question for you? Fire away. All right. Do off-map destinations work? Yes. Um, so I showed you one earlier on that was going to Hamburg. Um, so uh, and I, I, when I was looking around, actually, just to double check when the was looking at that thing, I found two or three other off destination things. So you'll find all the 425s that are going westbound say they're going to Nordenham, which isn't on the route. Fantastic. And you've already shown how the um, 
information system works. Yeah, that's with this lever up there. Yeah. Um, how many uh, M wagons are included? So it is just the standard second class and the cab car. Um, what the, the numbers are the four five one and the four six three. Um, there's, there is no first class in in the in the set in this set. In reality, there is, but in the set that we've modelled, there isn't. And I think I've seen this mentioned a few times, actually, um, and that is what services do the ice one and br101 drive What's oh this? right yeah so the br101 has um obviously a range of intercity services using the um avmz bvmz coaches um there's a couple of odd freights it is a very rare chance you'll see a 101 in reality hauling freight not common but very rare so we've added a couple of 101s on freight which you can take or leave um, and then there is um, there are a couple of ECS runs with the uh, odd coaching stocks that you can have as well. Then on the ICE one, it's normal ICE one services along the route. There's some empty coaching stock moves as well, which obviously you don't stop anywhere at. Uh, do a different uh, thing, and then you've got the uh, that that power car move as well. Fantastic. I feel like I've thrown some serious questions at you today. They're coming in thick and fast. Yep. <laughs> Thank God you're here. I'd be in so much trouble without you. I am trying to get everyone to say ICE, uh, uh, Caltevolmic, um, but it's hard work. Everyone says ice. I probably say it every now and again as well. Yeah, I thought they should have put some, like, full stops in between each letter. Well, it really stands for Intercity Express. So it kind of is an acronym, but everyone shortens it to ICE. ICE. It's the ICE train. I, I apologise. <laughs> I'm, I'm relatively new to trains. I'm not JD. I'm more familiar with... JD Mitch. gets it wrong too. JD gets it wrong too. <laughs> tut, tut, tut. Oh, I know. Animal, that would be I-C-E, I-C-E, baby. Yeah, exactly. There we go. That's how you remember it. Is there anything else we want to show or anyone else want, anyone wants to see M-Wagon related? If not, then we'll move on to a couple of other little bits that we would uh, we can show you. Well, let's get to uh, Huda and then I'll show you the inside of the parcel, parcel compartment oh, yeah. before we finish. That sounds good. Stopping at a station, Sinus Snor. Nah. No, no, no. Stop. Stop making unreasonable requests. Yeah, that's, you're asking way too much of us. Um, so, <clears throat> who came up with the idea of the movable drawbridge and paintable barge? And did you encounter any difficulties while working on these new features? Um, so, predominantly, it was Lucas and Peter. Um, discussing things and uh, having crazy ideas i'm sure others were involved as well um but um it's uh, it's kind of like the bridge was there it's not a minor thing and it was more a uh, you, we could have just modeled it and left it down permanently but everybody thought let's see what we can do here um and uh, uh i think it was i'm not aware there was any specific problems it was obviously it was a thing to do um that needed time and um I think it all came together actually relatively easily the challenging bit if anything was all the animation and making sure that worked all the sounds because the bridge when it lifts up and, and goes down has got um audio as well uh, and i think actually getting all of that in was probably more the uh, the uh, the complexity of it yeah i'm looking forward to having a bit of a look at that in a minute actually that'd be cool I'm going to keep the faith this time. Except I've just missed a CIFA. <laughs> Animal, the Bremen to Oldenburg route does not have pre-order attached to it, so um, it will be available on Tuesday the 6th of December, which is next Tuesday. 
and it will just be out. Yep. There will be times when you have to wait for a barge to cross the bridge, I would imagine. Yes. I don't know. I think the way that the train signaling works, you'll, you'll be you'll book the path a lot further away. I, I I've never seen it happen. I think it's more likely the barge will wait because it's got shorter pathing. But mm. tell me what you see. Yeah, I mean, it, you're not saying it's impossible. No. I bet there's a train coming the other way, and I'm going to go to the map view and miss it yeah. again while I mean, I'm finding it. Yeah, it's it's just at that moment when you feel like this is taking too long. And then you flick away and then it happens. <laughs> yeah, Luke has spent a bunch of time doing these and uh, I would like to show them. <laughs> um, simulator group, the pricing for the route will be twenty nine ninety nine in British pounds, thirty nine ninety nine in dollars and thirty five ninety nine in euros. And again, Tuesday the 6th of December, 10 a.m. on console. I've got to go back to the train. <laughs> Oh, you're getting a bit close, a bit tight. Exactly, I was thinking we must be getting close to the station by now. We have to look at the 425 before we finish as yeah, well. Yeah, we should. I was, I was going to say that. And that's actually good because we haven't actually planned for it, which means we'll be jumping into a totally random situation. Which is always a good thing. Yeah, exactly. One kilometre... Powering down. Run down. And uh, run down, exactly. And then I can get some brakes going. Into Huda. So does the brakes, the brakes work in the same way? You, you use the same lever, do you? Or? Same brake stand. But yeah, braking is, once you've got the hang of braking in one, it's the same for the other end. Cool. But is, is braking different in the sense that it's not remote controlled, it's actually... You're locally controlling you're the locally, brakes, yeah. just power. Just power you're remotely controlling. I understand. Oh, it's one of these wacky ECS trains. Oh, yeah. That's what I say, there's so many little oddities dotted around that you're bound to see something that makes you go, huh? You know what this will do. Close enough. Right, let's go out. So we open the door here. So this is the. Uh... Oh, nice! I like that handle animation. This is for storing things. Parcels. Like parcels. Yeah. Um, luggage. Uh, bicycles. A couple of bike rack things nice. there. Umbrella hooks. Taking you into the uh, coach with a little one door there. How many services does the ICE-1 have? There was a handful, wasn't there? Yeah, if you look back, we did scroll them through. Um, if yep. you look back earlier on in the stream, so you can see. When we're done, we should be, we should be finishing in the next 10, 15 minutes or so. You can scroll back and have a look. We did go through them. Yeah, no, like the end wagons. Right, should we do 45 next and then jump yes. on to... Um, Let's have a quick glimpse of that, then we'll go look at the bridge, and then we'll have a quick look at Bremen at night. Yep. So, not scenarios, uh, timetable, and 45, Bremen Oldenburg. Let's change the weather. Cloud. Uh, that one will do. Doesn't get more random than that. Uh, no changes to the 182 because it's not part of this pack, Chris. They're on the list to be looked at, but I don't know when. Right, come on, game. Finish loading. There we go. Right, so this is the uh, the 182. Um, so I believe there's been changes um, in some of the control systems. Uh, if we look outside, it's the... Uh, Sort of a more shiny red version rather than the weathered one, and you Very can clean. see we've got the uh, the name and the shield uh, on the unit as well. So all of them have got the uh, this. This coincidentally, we're going to Nordenham, but there's uh, six hmm. different ones. Um, and this is an example of AIs that the the, the destination boards off the route because Nordenham is is not on this route. It's on one of the branch lines. 
So, uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you one thing on here. I'm not going to open the doors. I'm just going to get the train moving and then stop it. And what we're going to do is just look at the look at this. Okay. So if I just put the power on, you'll see nothing's happening. Yep. And then it reacts. So that's new. Um, that used to be instant reaction. And all of the physics are now based on the uh, the sort of the four two threes way of doing it. But if I now cut the power, yes, yeah, slightly delayed, right? Because it's yes, it's not, it can't receive the information instantly. It has yeah. To, yeah. So if I put it into minimum power, there we go, and then. Put it on brake. Oh, you get brake as well. Interesting. Oh, yeah, you got the brake on this one as well. So, you've got the um, just so you yeah. This is the the new unit. It's very similar to the other one, but so the physics has had an overhaul. The art is slightly different. You've got these extra boards along the side there. So um, there's uh, there's something different about that. Can you set the destination on other locos, or is it just the? No, these are like, these are automatically They're set. Automatic, but the. Um, 110 and M1 the old ones. crankshaft one you can set on the uh, cap car yeah that makes sense um so right we're going to take a look at the bridge coming up in real time hopefully um to do that we're going to try and load in around 12 35 on foot and then hot step it up to the bridge for a hopeful 12 40 lift 12 35 yeah yes which we're hoping may be a double lift which could be interesting We've not, I don't think we've shown that yet. Let's see. I've got a bit of a walk. You'll have to bear with me. Flexible. Sorry. What have we done? Completionist. As we uh, head out of Oldenburg, there's another collectible over there. I'll try and restrain myself. I now feel like I should have done this section after the 10 in 10 so that you could have legged it up there. We probably would have, we would have missed it. We would have missed it. <laughs> we would have missed it for 100 <laughs> percent 612 sitting over there. And you'll notice the different freight trains are over here now. It's um There is a train coming out of here in a bit. Be Unfortunately careful. there isn't a pathway that you can walk across. Do not try this at home. Yeah, why don't we I guess the train doesn't stop at the bridge. No. Um, so we would have to jump off a moving train. The shunter down there. Right, the bridge is just down here. We're not far now. Nice. I think we're going to make it in, in good time. Oh yeah, plenty of time. Plenty of time. It doesn't open until 12.40. The train stopped at the light there, I think. Bridge. Nice. Thanks to comes the other train. Oh yeah, maybe not. Everyone wave. Everyone wave. Why is no one waving at us, Matt? I don't know. They should be waving their arms in the horror, really. <laughs> yeah, really. What are you doing down there? I've got my high vis on. Therefore, oh, I'm immune. Yeah. I'm immune. I've got hovers on. Right. Let's wander down here. Uh, the bridge open and closes um, approximately 20 to the hour. Uh, but in different... It won't always be the same. Sometimes um, you'll see a barge come round and then it will dock or maybe it will... Uh, turn around. Maybe uh, you'll have one barge coming and one side will lift. Maybe there'll be two and both sides will lift. Um, so it's a variety of different situations that could occur. So the first thing that happens when the bridge... You see, imagine that that's going to come down there. These are in the way. So let's look at... The, if you, while we're waiting, if you look at the OHLE, so the first thing that happens is the wire connects onto this bracket here and then you've got a fixed wire. That fixed wire carries on under the uh, under here. Mm -hmm. It then becomes a normal wire until the middle, because this is a bit where it splits. So you then got these contacts here that will then join the two halves of the bridge together. Right. And then the same thing going on the other side. So that's how you get overhead wires on a bridge that goes up and down. 
and then what you what you're looking for then is as the uh, bridge starts to o uh, open, you see these. You can see the pivot points here, where the uh, both side where the, the sides are open, it will spin these out of the way, and then the bridge will start lifting. Someone had to ask what what happens if you're standing on the bridge when it's lifting. You'll go up with the bridge. You go up with the bridge. Can we see if you have maybe if a barge is coming or not? Clear on the right. Not yet. I just want to watch these because these happen fairly quickly. You'll miss them. Right, right, right. Should see a barge. The, the bridge will start lifting in, in, in about a minute or so. Uh, I don't know if I asked you this. I don't think I did. Um, will the press BR 155 substitute onto other routes? Mm -hmm. It will. So I've, uh, I, d I had a look on my system earlier on and I saw it on, so if you go by to the trains and then you look at by train, selected the BR155 blue and I found it on Bremen, Hauptstrecke Rheinrohr, Munich Augsburg, Hauptstrecke Rheinrohr, Main Spessart Dresden Riesa, Wuppertal, Rheinrohr Osten, uh, Rosig Nord, uh, Castle Würzburg and Dresden Chemnitz. So pretty much everywhere you'd expect it to show up. Yeah, that's, um, that's a lot. It's just subbing in everywhere the red one would work. Did the um, OHLE artist also work on this route? Yes, he did. Oh, you can assume every oh, every route with OHLE has been worked on by uh, by him, um, and, uh, him and all of Lucas these days. It seems like this one has presented them with a unique challenge. Lucas looked after all this aspect of it because it's all part and parcel of all the animation. So I think that um, Lee sort of did the OHLE up to the ends of the bridge and then um, Lucas looked after the, the complexity of the bridge itself. Are there any achievements on this route? In the route? Of course, oh. it's that side that's going up. Ugh. Well, <laughs> that's uh, luck of the draw. Well, we, you know, we, saw it, we saw it go up, we just didn't see the mechanics of it happening. So these are the pistons. Can you fly over there with the camera to see it go back the other way? Uh, not easily, no. I'm on a real build, so I don't have the fly camera. Oh. What's that sound? Oh, hello. We're in business. Oh, except that didn't animate. No, guys. <laughs> got a boat, yeah. Oh, got one boat. Oh, hello. No, what? You are lifting, sir. Wow. I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to be this close. Probably not. So we've got a boat coming down that way, and we've got a boat coming up the other way. Okay, we got there. I don't know why that didn't animate. I will uh, find out. It's still very cool. I mean, I'm guessing... I mean, it's just, it's still very cool to see, I think. Mm. So the should we, to go um, by. oh yeah, we'll wait for a, a boat to come along and have a look. Yeah, if there's only one boat going by, it only lifts one side of the bridge. It's only because there are two boats going by that you're seeing both bits go up. There's the other one. Very much looking forward to seeing some custom liveries on these coming through. Nice, a little, little recognition horn. I like the um, the chuggy, chuggy diesel sound.
and the bridge actually starts coming down pretty sharp. I'm the other one's already so. going. Yeah. And then this one will come along any minute. The little tracks it runs on, I just think it's such a cool way. <coughs> Engineering blows my mind, basically. Quite everything fascinating. It's incredible, isn't it? And it's got to line up precisely so that the rails work. Yeah, which is crazy. And then it has to meet, the, the cables have to meet in the middle in the way. That they see, can these ones just swung over. I don't know why this one didn't. Oh no, look, they're free set now. <laughs> Ugh. We have the road. Then shortly, that then finishes up and is down. Lovely. All right, now let's take a quick look at Bremen at night, please, Matt. And that will be the conclusion of this evening. And let's go for seven o'clock. Again, we're sticking it to this so that the weather isn't changing out from under us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the boats do move a bit fast, Triple, but if it took the realistic amount of time, then probably it would be less fun. I selected somewhere in the completely the wrong nowhere. place. <laughs> I went to Oldenburg. Nice. Well done, me. You know, Oldenburg, Depot, Bremen, Station, they're almost the same place. Peter, you can't do a spot of fishing. Yeah, it's a different game. Different game, but one of our games. Clouds. Let's try that again. It will be available. So Bremen to... Oh, I've forgotten it now. Bremen to Oldenburg will be available Tuesday, the 6th of December, 10 a.m. on consoles, and a little bit later on in the afternoon on Epic and Steam. We've got a launch or announce article, I should say, sorry, on our website, trainsimworld.com. You can have a look at a bunch of the information. So this is Bremen at night. So you can see the bit that's not just in the station lighting. Mm. <coughs> Looking vibey, honestly. Got some coaches Moody. stabled over here. Another 612 sat over there. T posing welcomed. <coughs> the don't pass here markers. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't think oh no, would. I went past there. Oh wow. That's a very cool building. Has he got a glass roof? Clearly my favourite building, but couldn't possibly think why, honestly. Just the geometry of it, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. you just love architecture. Yes. Love rectangles. <clears throat> it's in any of my Minecraft buildings, you'd realise that's actually scarily true. <laughs> Very nice. For little shops and stuff. It's pretty late at night, isn't it? So I wouldn't expect to see too much going on. No, absolutely. But there you go. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking time out to, to show everybody. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning. And we hope you've enjoyed taking uh, a first look with us at Bremen to Oldenburg. We've certainly enjoyed showing you. Um, and answering loads of questions. So just to remind everybody one more time, Barn Strecker, Bremen to Oldenburg, um, will be available Tuesday, December the 6th, on all platforms, 10 a.m. on consoles, a little bit later on in the afternoon on Epic and Steam. It's $29.99 in pounds, $39.99 in dollars, and $35.99 in euros. 
And that's it. Thank well you very much for tuning in. Thank you for being welcoming and friendly. It's my first time streaming to you guys. And I Round of GG's for Ben, please, folks. Round of GG's thank for you, Ben. Thank you, thank you. I was the guy that was waving a few streams ago because I'm normally just <laughs> pressing the buttons. <laughs> but I've been, I've been promoted, guys. I'm, I'm on camera. All right, <clears> we'll, <throat> um, we'll call it a day. I'm going to roll the teaser trailer and uh, we'll see you in Bremen and or Oldenburg on Tuesday. Yes, and don't forget the roadmap stream. Roadmap stream, yes. Oh. All right. See you later. See you, everyone.